Matt Bill Prado. Today I'm here with Nat and this is his 105 series Land Cruiser. We're going to run through the whole thing, give you a rig rundown. So I hope you enjoy. Alrighty guys, so we're at the front of the car. We're going to start at the front and run through to the back. So what wool bar have we got here? So for the 105, I uh, opted for the ARB Deluxe commercial bar. Um, did a bit of modification to it. Didn't quite like how it sat with the car. So I ended up cutting off um, the rear the bottom underneath. It looks good. Um, a lot of guys on the 105 pages said to um, incorporate the tube underneath as well. Oh, yeah. um, I didn't quite like that look. It looked like a lot of tube was going on. So I haven't quite got there yet. Yeah. Um, and then this is Raptor, obviously. Yeah, so Raptor. the whole bulb bar is wrapped it, along with the car. But um, yeah. the bulb bar was the first thing we wrapped it just to see how it would go um, and if I actually liked it. So far, it's been pretty durable. Uh, we did it late last year, August, mm. and um, so far it's held up pretty well. Done mm. a lot of trips since, and there's a few knocks and scratches, but it's full, it's full drive, yeah. It's exactly. what you're right, definitely. So, so, obviously, here we've got some sort of little light bar here on each side. What, what's that one? Yep, so the, on each side, I've put these little 18 inch steady light bars up, oh, um, nice. just single rows, and um, they're more my flood, um, seeing as the uh, LEDs inside these all Tezzas aren't as bright as I like. So yeah, it's yeah. good for the open road and yeah. those long road trips. Yeah, fair. And then nice. what, what are these ones here? Yeah. They're also a steady, so they're oh, a no. steady flush mount, four inch cube. Yeah. Um, nice, nice. And just cut straight into the ball bar. Yeah, see, I like, I like that look, that looks nice. Mm. All right, so what winch have we got here? So I'm running the Bush Ranger. Um, it's 1200 LBS uh, pound and it's full wireless and wired. Oh, no. Well, oh nice. So yeah, right. I can just run the controller from straight inside the car. Which one's better? Which one do you prefer? Oh. Wine or wireless? I go wireless most of the time because yeah. then I don't have to get out and try and yeah, that's fair. Um, plug in the wire and then feed it all back <laughs> to the car. Yeah, that's fair. So, no. that's um, yeah, it's got me out a few spots. Sitting underneath it is the uh, old recovery points. Um, they're up a 200 series, yeah. so 105 didn't really make a good recovery point that's oh, nice yeah. and flush. Yeah, right. So, um, also off the page, uh, guys said run 200 series ones, and um, they bolted Sweet. straight up. So oh, awesome. That's where they the more are. you know, I have no idea about that. I yeah. Know if they, they had made like a not as good recovery. Yeah. Than... And then obviously, so we've got GME, everything here. Yep. So. <laughs> well, only the best. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, she's an aerials and UHFs, mm. and you know, it's hard. So yeah. um, I went the 6.6. .6 DVI on a just tilt bracket, so then nice. going through undercover car parts. Yeah, exactly. On being such a big car, it's um, nice knowing the top of my antenna is the same height as my roof. Yeah, that's fair. Um, that's fair. So, yeah, that's what that's for. And then, yeah, just the sand flag pole. Oh, and, nice. Um, the sand flag pole. Yeah, sand flag <laughs> pole, and then um, can and the stubby holders. Oh, perfect. For those guys that are smoke around the car and use it as an ashtray. Oh, so, see, that, that's a new mine. I like that one. There you go. <laughs> I should sell that in BTS. Yeah. So now, yeah. obviously, this is a big key feature of the car. Some crazy looking bonnet scoop. What, tell us the story behind that. So this is from the fiberglass company. Um, yep. A mob over in Melbourne. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Um, just the 2018 um, 79 scoop. Yeah. Um, that's it. Still being incorporated into the bonnet. Mm. Um, it's a bit of a 50-50 between actually doing it sandy tall for doing it, leaving it black. Yeah, yeah, that's so, right. There's a lot of guys out there saying leave it black, it's leave it, yeah. make it stand out. It looks um, nice though, and it's just riveted on. Just riveted at the moment, yep. um, but once I finally decide on what I'm really doing with it, I'll probably yeah. get it moulded correctly and yeah, that's cool. get a full fiberglass Did up. you have to cut a hole in the bonnet? Is that yeah, so there is actually a hole. <laughs> There is a hole in the bonnet. Oh, that was scary. Cut that. You don't yeah. want to get that wrong. <laughs> no, that was, that was a fun afternoon. Yeah. Trying to measure up the hole and um, getting, getting yeah. the angle grinder on it without yeah. burning anything inside the engine as well. <laughs> that's true. That's very true. So, uh, so a quick run through on the headlights. They are just an eBay special from Altezza. Um, the originals are a two piece. So you've got an indicator and a solid headlight normally, uh, which is broken up in half with uh, low beam and high beams. Um, so I've gone the one piece now with the indicator and the high and low fully incorporated one. Um, I've got blue LED parkers um, and then for the actual globes I've changed them out from the factory halogens that they were sent with and I've put in steadies. Um, a lot of guys have a lot of trouble with uh, putting LED lights in these because the space between the 
battery and the back of the headlight is really tight. Um, mm -hmm. But I have managed to do it. So if you guys want to get around it, you can do it. So right along the side of the car for the intake, we got just the Safari snorkel at the moment. Um, I have been looking at getting two stainless snorkels. So one on the passenger and one on this side um, from Fab Whips over in WA. Um, one of the other mods that we'd like to do is change our indicators. Um, so we've got an LED orange amber in there with a clear surround. Just looks cleaner, suits the car better. Uh, running out to the pillar, running grandpa visor. Um, thanks to Lucky Do um, for bringing it out to me, even though it wouldn't fit on his car. Um, and then up inside the window, we've actually got the air horns. They do work, they are operational. Um, they switch inside. Um, won't use them now, they are pretty loud and deafening. Alrighty, so what paint we got on here? Well, Raptor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as Matt said, this is Raptor coated. Uh, it's thinned down by 15%. Um, we did this in May 2019. Um, funny story about it was uh, we did the ball bar first and then um, the paint on this was already so old and crusty. It was the original white and um, every time you ran your hand over it, it would come off. Like oh, you'd, you'd be left with white dust in your hand. That's pretty bad. So um, one weekend, took it down to one of my mate's place and um, he literally just gave it a quick scuff over with 80 grit sandpaper and then um, yeah, blasted out with the sandy top, uh, Raptor mm. in the tintable kits. Um, nice. I only used eight litres of paint for okay. this whole car. Big car as well. So. Um, eight litres of paint for the whole car and it was done in a weekend because the next oh. weekend took it on the border track, so wow. I needed it done. <laughs> That's so sick, yeah. Um, no, it looks, it, what, what makes the car stand out really. Exactly. The, the paint, yeah. yeah. So. Being Sandy Thorpe, everybody knows it's the classic Toyota colour. Yeah, definitely. As I'm sure you're aware. I'm biased, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and, no, that's um, it. Yeah, she's held up pretty well so far. Yeah. How long has it been on the car for, roughly? Uh, so, May 2019, we sprayed it. So, yeah. uh, what are we now? January. So, yeah, it'll be coming up to almost two years. Wow. So, not too bad. She's held up pretty well. Yeah. Been a few times. Um, yeah, on tracks and stuff, we can yep. a few light scratches, but... A few light ones, but... And if you look never. hard. <laughs> yeah, she washes that cool. well. Yeah, perfect. And then obviously, well, what have we got here? What's this here? So, this is by a group called Denkin Australia. They do some really wicked recovery gear as well. Um, they have these blackout finals that can go straight on the outside of any window. Mm. Um, Looks nice. I thought it was an emu wing before I sent it here. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> so, yeah. Just cleaned up the side really nicely. Yeah. Suited it, so. It looks really nice, yeah. I might get one of my car now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so running underneath, we're running um, for the tyres. We've got the Nitto Trail Grapplers. Um, thanks to Matt and Sam at Tire Power Kensington Park. Um, we're running a 315, so 35, um, on a 16 inch rim uh, from Dynamic with a Neg 25 offset. Um, and I've just filled it with a couple of stickers um, make it look nice. Um, stopping power is a big thing with these big cars, so got the Bendix upgraded kit underneath um, to help with the stopping. So we're running for suspension, we've got the Dobinsons, um, we've got 4 inch in the front with a 5 inch in the rear, just to counter most of my weight in the back end. Um, we've got 11.5 inch travel shocks um, for that maximum flexibility on these solid front axles. Uh, vehicles. Um, everything's adjustable underneath. Pan rods, um, uh, radius arms um, have been caster corrected and all other adjustable requirements needed for such a big lift. We'll head up top. So running the Trojan 4x4 camping on South Road 270 freestanding awning. It's literally a 30 second setup and it is completely freestanding. Um, I do set up the pole does come with a pole so you can set it up um, right up on top uh, sleeping arrangement I've actually got one of my mates uh, rooftop tents um, it's just a King's quirky pop top and then running the uh, red arc solar panel which powers all three batteries throughout the car um, keep coming around we've got a pop-out window from a GXL 
Um, this is actually going to come out soon and replacing it with a cruiser company EMU wing, um, which then will have behind that a little shelf full of inverters, battery management, all that good stuff that everybody loves to see in full drives. Um, this quarter, she's got a bit of a story. Um, if you look at it closely enough, you can see she's been quite dinged up. Um, this was a SA4 crew trip to border track, and um, unfortunately, she took a little roll in one of the um, and mud pits. So that was a bit of fun recovering her out of that. But thankfully, it was just a quarter, and no one was actually injured. Um, right around the back end of her, she's pretty basic, stock standard bundles. Um, we've got plastic bumper, uh, just put back on. Normally run no bar, um, but I am looking at either the cruiser company bar or um, actually making my own tube bar. And um, then that will help support 35 on the rear as well. Um, four inch dump wipe, <laughs> just a little tip from super cheap, 20 bucks to pick up and um, just cleaned it up really, instead of having just a straight out pipe. Uh, on the top of the rack, we've got the bush door lights. Um, they are blue. They do look nice. Um, they've come out with Gen 2 now lights. Um, but yeah, so many different modes, and they just look really nice as well at night. Back of the vehicle, um, we've got we'll start with the door. Uh, made a little shelf here so I can hold up some barbecue spices and uh, some cooking essentials. Um, Got songs, normally have a knife and a spatula that sit here as well. Move around, um, got the old Ingle, uh, it's the 45 combi, so it's fridge and freezer. Um, this is on a Dun & Watson tilt slide, so best thing ever for me, being such a big car, me being a bit shorter, um, drops down to the perfect usable height, and being a front upwards lift, it's all there, accessible. Um, keep going around, got the three drawers, um, we use one of them mostly for your bigger hand tools and then um, the other one's also packed just full of all my normal work tools. Um, these all come away camping with me so never short on tools. And then yeah just the kitchen drawer as well. Um, a little switch panel here just for the bush lights on the rears. Uh, we've got interior strip light as well for when it's dark. And then two more extra switches, um, accessory wise. Uh, this door is a brand new door off another older cruiser. Um, but on my previous one, I had a drop down table as well, which used to sit the barbecue um, at a perfect height for cooking. So moving up front, um, inside, we've got just the pillar pod holders. Um, they are empty at the moment because I obviously haven't got a turbo on the old girl yet. Um, but that is coming, that's something you'll see soon. Genetic R and Williams steering wheel cover. Um, we got a 10 inch extended gear shifter because every time you go to second or fourth, it would have smacked the front of the fridge. Um, this was a POV pack, so it did have a bench seat, which I changed out for fridge and single seat now. And um, this has been really helpful on the road trips. Got the double DIN head unit for Pioneer. Uh, we got the XRS Connect from GME. Just connected through the uh, connect. Um, got phone holders, and then I installed this roof console off a older, or well, not older actually, it's a newer GXL 100, and um, it all bolted straight up as well, along with all the doors. So the doors are actually off a GXL as well. Um, all the wiring's there for any um, electric windows, central locking, all works. It all plugs, plugs in, um, and on the right on the back cage we have up here just the max tracks wedge between the cage and the rear seat, along with fire extinguisher as well for all those safety needs. All right, guys, that's the end of the rig rundown. Let us know if you have any questions or comments about the car uh, down below, and I'm sure uh, we can both go through there, mostly him, and um, critique any specific things because I don't know as much about his own car. Now his Instagram is actually here, you probably can't see it, but LC105S underscore. Go follow him, go support him, he's got heaps more stuff coming. And uh, anything else you'd like to add, Nathan? Uh, that's it really, there's not much else to it. It's an old cruiser out on the roads, and um, get out for some trips. Mm. Okay. Uh -huh.
Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time. Cheers.